Hey guys, this is Mr. Hendrickson, and this is the Energy Skate Mark Pre-Lab. I'm going to kind of just walk you through how to uh, use the Energy Skate Park simulation, how to sort of toggle some of the features, and how to throw a track together so you can do the lap. So follow along. Uh, when you are following the initial link to the simulation, um, either through the web page or through the lab itself, uh, you'll arrive at this intro screen. Uh, you'll have three options, and we want to make sure that we pick the playground. Once you open the playground up, you're going to see something that looks like this on your iPad. Um, it is very important that when you're using your iPad, uh, you want it to be in portrait mode. So in other words, you want your iPad to be running uh, you know, vertically up and down, not side to side. Uh, doing that is going to give you a lot more space to create your track. So please, again, make sure your iPad is in portrait mode while you're doing this lap. So what you're going to see uh, is your skateboarder just sort of sit on the ground doing a whole lot of nothing here. Um, so to start it off, we need to go ahead and make sure we build a track uh, that we can have our skater skate on. To do that, you're going to notice you have uh, these three red dots. These represent pieces of track. Simply uh, drag them onto the screen or the, the playground area and then let go where you want the track to begin. So what we can do here is if you click onto this track, you can move it around. But if you click onto a dot, the dot actually causes the track it's itself to stretch and move. So I want to elongate the track here um, to create something that my skateboarder can sort of drop in on. So uh, what you see here is I already got a track, sort of a, a little bit of a ramp here for my skater to drop in on. Um, but that's not really what I want. What I actually want to do is create a loop. So I'm going to need to drag more track into the picture here. So simply when you drag one piece of track onto another, you can see that it just sort of connects um, automatically, which is kind of nice. So again, I'm going to keep stretching my track out, keep stretching it out. Um, but I need to create, again, a loop here. So again, here's my loop starting to form. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. But I'm going to need more track. Again, bring it in. We have something. Again, you can kind of tweak it. Um, kind of change the shape of that loop a bit if you need to. Something like that. And then we're going to get some more track in there. Again, we'll keep sort of stretching this thing out. And ah, that looks like that'll work for now. Okay, so what we're going to do from here is we're going to need to let our skateboarder actually ride on the track. So uh, while we do this, um, we need to make sure that uh, we are checking the correct uh, functions for each question during the lab itself. So uh, there are some options. We have a uh, pie chart, a bar graph, a grid, and also the ability to show our speed. Um, these are all just bits of information that we are allowed to see while we run the simulation. Uh, below that, we can also toggle uh, the mass. And when we talk about mass, really what we're saying is the mass of the skater. And then we can also um, toggle the friction. So friction, of course, is the friction between the skateboard and the track itself. Okay, so for this particular uh, lab, we want to make sure that we're going to turn the friction off. Um, and then for now, we're going to leave the mass just as is. Uh, there's one final option below. And uh, basically, this is uh, you can set the track kind of like to be a rail or like a roller coaster where the skater is locked into the track, or we can make it so the skater can actually fall off the track. We're going to set it so that the skater could potentially fall off the track. The skater's not stuck to the track. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just see what this looks like when you put the skater on. You simply click and drag the skater, and you can put the skater anywhere on the track, and then just let go, and there goes our skater through the loop. Back to the other side. At any point you want to pause, you can click the pause button to stop it. Um, if you want to sort of restart where the skater's at, you can hit the restart button. That skater will go to where you dragged that skater last. Uh, in addition, you can also go to slow motion. Again, slow motion just allows you to see uh, a little bit of a slower rate what's going on. That might help as you start to analyze um, the energy of this skater through the simulation. Um, another option we have is this little button to the right here and as you click this you can actually see your skateboarder move incrementally and you can kind of control the rate that the skater moves forward this also might be helpful later on so um, what are some other things we can do again we can click pie chart pie chart is going to allow you to see the kinetic potential and thermal energy of the skater it shows up in a little bubble above the skater's head let's take a look and see what that looks like we'll put it on normal 
There you go. You can see how that changes. In addition to that, we can add in a bar graph. A bar graph shows us, it's just another way to sort of display the energy of the skater as the skater moves through the loop. Again, you can see how that changes. We can also add a grid to the background. The grid is going to allow us to actually measure uh, the heights that our skater reaches uh, from the beginning, the middle, to the end. So as you can see, um, if you are interested in finding the height of the skater at any given point, simply pause it and you can find the skater's height at that point because there are markings on the grid. So here's two meters, three, four, five, six meters, etc. Finally, we can, if we're interested, put up a speed um, or a speedometer, rather, a speed meter. Um, and this speedometer is uh, marked from left to right. So there, um, there are no markings, but it should be understood that this initial mark is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So right now my skater would be going seven meters per second. Okay, so these are the options you have. These are the things you need to be doing during the course of the lab in order to uh, complete the lab questions. Eventually, they will ask you to change the friction. In order, when you want to go ahead and do that, you will at the end just simply slide the friction back up to lots, hit play, and you can sort of observe what happens there. I don't want to give too much away. There's one last point I wanted to mention. Uh, if at any point during the lab you mistakenly hit the yellow restart button in the lower right corner, it will completely um, erase your entire track and you'll have to start anew with a totally different loop which will change all of your previous work. So please be careful with that. But as always, make sure that you completely read the lab and always go back and watch this video again if you're unclear on anything. Thanks and have fun.